Today we're going to be looking at the most important planets in each Varga. Uh, this is a supplementary video for the Varga's weekend webinar that we will be doing here in October. So if you want some more information on how to participate in that weekend webinar, go to astralvedicastrology.com and go to the events page. Um, what we're going to be talking about are some general techniques on how to assess a chart more fully using the Vargas. And what are the Vargas? The Vargas are the divisional charts. And what are the divisional charts? The divisional charts are uh, extrapolations from the main birth chart, from the main Rashi chart. And one of the things that we learned in the apprenticeship course um, was the idea that the signs themselves are not just 30 degree segments completely Aries or 30 degree segments completely Taurus, the energy of Aries and the energy of Taurus. What we learned was is that each degree in each sign will take a planet and will put it in a different position in one of the other Vargas. Why is this important? Because just like we have different houses and we have different planets, well, the Vargas, the divisional charts, are extrapolations from the main birth chart which show us how each planet works more fully through every area of life. Now, when we're reading a chart, we have to rely upon confluence, the idea of confluence. And what does confluence do? What does confluence tell us? By taking proper notes as you uh, ascertain what is Mars up to in the chart, and then looking to see what is going on with the third house, and then looking to see what is the karka, uh, the changeable karka for siblings doing. And what is that Mars doing in the drekana? And how is the drekana? All these things are going to give you greater understanding, greater appreciation of what's going on in the area of life for the individual in question related to their brothers, their siblings, their peers, the things or the people that um, one tries to accomplish goals with. That's related to Mars. That's related to the changeable karaka of siblings. That's related to the drekana. That's related to the third house. All these things tie together. And so as we've gone through the apprenticeship course so far, we've already completed year one of it. Uh, one of the things that students have been learning, and which I'd like to encourage you to consider and think about too, is that when you are reading a chart, one of the best ways to do it is to zero in on each uh, aspect of the chart and take notes and then find every other thing within that chart that represents the area of life you're looking at and take notes and by the time you get done you will have done this for every planet for every sign for every house ideally every Varga as well and then you will see where all the confluence where all the rivers of information overlap and where one area is more prominent, where there's more, um, more things pointing in the direction of a particular event or a particular experience, that's the area of life that you're going to more likely be able to say, this is a more certainly fixed karma for you, and here's how you can benefit from it, or here's how you need to deal with it or prepare for it. So anyway, this whole idea of confluence is extremely important, and the idea is taken to the Vargas, because each Varga, represents an area of life. Uh, Brihat Parashar Shastra lists these um, for a little more up-to-date version. The Art and Science of Vedic Astrology Volume 2, the appendix, uh, lists all the most important planets in each Varga, all the karakas, all the indicators for each Varga. Uh, but the point is that if we know what the Varga represents and we know what the most important planet in that Varga is, we can deepen our understanding of how to read the Varga, which will also deepen our understanding of how to uh, assess how a chart's going to express itself, and you're less likely to make mistakes, realizing that all of us humans, for the most part, mentally, at least this stage, uh, this era, we're not as perfect as we could be. Um, and so we just aim to do our best, and by including the Vargas, we will do much better. Now, what is the first Varga? The first Varga is just your birth chart, the Rashi chart. 
Uh, it tells us the path that you are on, the experiences that you're going to have, the people that are going to come into your life. And the first Varga is represented by the first planet, which is what? Well, that's the sun. We have to remember that it is the sun's light that reflects off of all the planets, which empowers the planets. The planets take upon uh, whatever the sun delegates to them, because it is the sun that is the atma, the soul of all. So the Rashi chart, your birth chart, D1, uh, or the first Varga, the sun is the most important planet. So that is one of the reasons why it can be helpful to read a chart from the sun sign, particularly in the first Varga. Now, when we consider this and we keep thinking it through, what is the next planet in order of planets? Well, the next one is the moon. So the moon is representative of the second Varga, or the Hora. And what happens once we've come into embodiment, once we have our path? Well, then we get to Varga number two, uh, which is our responsibilities. It represents how we meet our responsibilities. How do we organize and take care of those things within our life so that we can progress through other areas of life? Now, we have to be cautious here when we talk about the Hora, uh, because most people use the Hora that is set up such that you take all the planets and you either put them in the sun sign or in the moon's sign. So that's one kind of a hora, and that is a very common hora. Uh, there are other horas too. Uh, there's a hora, if I recall correctly, that uh, breaks the chart down in the second and eleventh from a planet's position. Um, there's another hora which divides each sign in halves. So if a planet's in one half of a sign, it stays in the sign it's in. If it's in the other half of the sign, it goes to the opposite sign. So be advised that there are different types of horas. Um, some are more popular than others, and some will claim that certain horas are more accurate. However, what I've found is that if you understand how each hora is divided, that gives you a specific kind of information, meaning one hora tells you one um, bit of information about how a person deals with their responsibilities. Another hora will focus more on the exchange of meeting those responsibilities with others. And the other hora will show how does one deal with one's gains and one's finances more specifically. So each hora is actually specific to a different kind of interpretation. Now, in the weekend webinar that we will be doing here in October, uh, we will be discussing this and we'll be looking at those different kinds of horas, as well as going up through, I believe, uh, the D10. Um, we might not get to the D12, but we'll be looking at the D10. But anyway, point being, when we're looking at the birth chart, we need to put prime importance on the sun in regards to a person's path in life, direction in life. That's planet number one. When we are considering a person's responsibilities and how they meet their responsibilities, well, what are we considering there? Uh, we're looking at the moon. And this is always really fascinating when you think these things through. Um, for this particular example, well, the sun happens to be exalted in Aries, which is the first sign, and the moon happens to be exalted uh, in the second sign of Taurus. All right, So we can see how when we think about exaltations of planets, uh, sometimes they're obvious, like the sun and the moon, but they will give us more insights into what are each planet, how does each planet uh, focus on a specific area of life. So if you think about the exaltations of every planet and where it's placed by sign, that is. So think about the number of the sign, whereas Aries is one, Taurus is two, Gemini is three, and so on. Um, that will give you deeper insights in regards to how the planets function, what they're really responsible for. It doesn't work with all of them. This is just, I'm not going to say it's a coincidence, but it does help us see a little bit more deeply into how each planet works. So the third Varga, that deals with what? That deals with our siblings. That's what we always hear. But what does it really deal with? Yes, you can use the third Varga, applying dashes, even applying uh, transits to the Varga, to see 
what kinds of experiences will you have with your siblings? But what are siblings? They're not just the people that are born to you, because not everyone has a sibling. Uh, but you still have the Drekana. They are the people that you achieve goals with, that challenge your courage, that you go on adventures with. So they're your peers. They're the people that you achieve things with, ideally. And what is the planet that is specific to the third Varga? The third Varga is specific to Mars. The third Varga is specific to Mars. So again, just as I mentioned with my earlier discussion, if you want to look at siblings, peers, people you go on adventures with, um, how skillfully you bring uh, what's in your consciousness into the world, you want to look at Mars. Uh, with Mars, Mars is very important when it comes to looking at um, the third bhava within the Drekana, and that's the third varga, it's called the Drekana. Uh, the sixth bhava and the ninth bhava, all these things are related to the number three. When we look at the Drekana and the third bhava in the Drekana, this is in a sense telling us uh, how well are we going to be able to get along with, to go on adventures with, uh, to do things with, to develop our courage with, those peers within our life. And by adventures, by courage, that can be anything. That can be starting a business. Uh, that can also be how do you deal with your marriage, because there has to be a level of camaraderie within your marriage as well to be successful in that regard. The sixth bhava can show us um, how do you deal with the obstacles that occur in those relationships. Do you deal with them well? Do you not deal with them well? Um, the ninth bhava within the D3 can show us how strong of a drive is your sense of purpose and with how much uh, strength of character do you meet that sense of purpose. You know, some of the more difficult people that we see in life who have trouble, they don't have a sense of purpose because they're looking for purpose outside of themselves. And sometimes that does fall into our laps. But as we see having the Drekana and the main planet being Mars, and it having such a profound influence on our drive and our direction and our skills, um, oftentimes if there, are if there is trouble with the ninth bhava or if there is trouble with Mars within the Drekana, this can be a person who needs to develop their purpose, needs to choose their purpose, needs to create a purpose for themselves. This is one of the things that Mars is good for. Mars is the self-starter. Mars takes initiative. Sure, he takes order as well when he can see the grand scheme of how that those orders or that initiative is meant to be. Um, but when he's lost, what does he do? He takes things into his own hands. So how skillfully do you do that? That's going to be related to Mars and the Drekana. And all of these tie together. Um, we'll get to that a little bit, hopefully, later on in this video. But for example, since the second house deals with your fortunes and your responsibilities, well, we need to tie this to the fourth Varga, which is the abundance of our fortune. So if you manage your responsibilities well, if you manage your moon well, then you've got a greater capacity uh, to benefit from what's going on in the um, Chattertamsha, the fourth Varga. Uh, if you deal with the Drekana well, you've got a better likelihood of finding more purpose, more capacity for committed relationships um, in the ninth Varga, the Navamsha. So, as we're thinking these things through, there are numerous little subtle insights that we can pick up just by exploring uh, the main planets and even the main houses or the main bhavas within each particular varga. Now, speaking of the Chattertamsha, the D4, the fourth varga, well, what's the main planet in the D4? Well, think about it. If you follow the order that we've been going in so far, you've got the sun, one, moon, two, Mars next. Sun, Moon, Mars. Now in the order of planets as you know them, if you, as you've learned them, what happens after Mars? Well then you get to Mercury. So Mercury is the most important planet within the Chattertamsha. And why is that? Because the Chattertamsha uh, is the fortune that we get. Think about it, to have a house, to have a vehicle, to own it. Uh, that requires that we've managed our resources very well. And most people take that kind of a thing for granted, but that is actually a, a status symbol for wealth. Um, you know, when we look at older books, they would say, how many cattle do you have, or whatever it might be. Now it's houses, or it's vehicles, property, which is why 
the fourth Varga is often related to property. And the idea is that you manage your resources well, the moon, the Hora. And then you're better able to explore and tap into the benefits of the Chattertamsha. Now Mercury is the planet of management. Mercury is the planet that allows us to see how well we manage all the different affairs of our life, which is why having a wonderful Mercury can help out every other area of a person's chart and of a person's life. And think about the order that we're going in here now too. So we've got the Sun, which is our soul force coming into the world, our sense of direction, which is our life path. We've got the Moon, which is now we start relating to other people and other things. And that requires that we meet their responsibilities, um, that they meet ours, that we take care of our own, that we respect each other in this regard. But we move from this initial impulse of the, the path or the soul direction into the moon, which is now how is that light going to be held? How are we going to define ourselves? And that's largely related to how we meet our responsibilities. Next, once we have our resources, once we have met our responsibilities, we've gathered our fortunes as much as we can that we need for our day-to-day -day existence, which is often the Hora. Now we can look at the third Varga, the Drekana, because now we can go on our adventure. Now we can explore life. Now we can tap into Mars. Once we go on that adventure, what occurs? Well, now from there we start building our fortunes. We start building our fortunes. And Mercury is very much a wealth-related planet because the better that we manage things, uh, the better that we are able to uh, communicate with others, uh, the greater our fortunes can grow. And from there, what happens when we think about the evolution of uh, human life and human consciousness? Well, now we get to the point where we need to really consider how can we take our life a step further? How can we start building our legacy? And the legacy is often related to the seventh Varga, or the Saptamsha. So what's the planet that's going to be most important in the Saptamsha? So follow it again. Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury. So when we think about the listing of planets, as you've probably learned them in your very basic classes, what planet comes next in this listing? Well, it's Jupiter. So we have Jupiter as one of the prime planets for the Saptamsha. And this is very interesting because most people would put Jupiter as the planet for the Navamsha. And Jupiter does play an important role in the Navamsha. And that's a very good point to keep in mind is that all the planets are important in all of the Vargas. Okay, that is why in the book, The Art and Science of Vedic Astrology, Volume 2, I made sure to list all of the planets and what they can represent in each particular Varga. So all of the planets are going to have an impact. And that is one of the things that we will cover in our more detailed weekend webinar because you can't go into it in shorter YouTube videos. I'm going to try to do some more uh, videos like this on YouTube to give you deeper insights, but to really dig into it, we have to put some focus time and energy uh, exploring these things. So each planet is important in every Varga, but there is a, a planet that's more prominent uh, in each particular Varga. And so for the, the D7, the Saptamsha, uh, this is Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of creativity. Jupiter is the planet of children. And what is the most common legacy that people leave behind? Mostly their children. Um, when it comes to the seventh or the Saptamsha, the D7, it is related to what comes out of our relationships. Are we able to creatively, or simply are we able to create with another individual? And so the better that Saptamsha, the better the likelihood you're going to be able to get together with someone else. This is why um, the Saptamsha can also deal with things like dating, because that's when you're starting to develop that romance. And from that romance, hopefully, if someone wants it to happen this way, I mean, you don't have to because the world's pretty overpopulated as it is, so don't worry about it if um, you're okay not having children. You can be creative in other ways. Uh, but we look at the D7 for children. And as I just mentioned, you can look at the D7 for other things. People's uh, work can be their children. Um, how they're able to build a business, that can be their child. Writing a book, their art. Um, whatever they want to contribute to the world, that creative impulse they want to share and bring into the world, whether it's a child or something else, you would look at the D7 and you would look at Jupiter. And it's really fascinating. 
I was recently watching a documentary on Netflix, um, Secrets of the Solar System, maybe. I don't know. I need to go back and look at that. Um, but I did post it on my Facebook page, um, and this is around October 9th, 2000. What year is it? 2016. So you can go back to my Facebook page, Astral Vedic Astrology, and find it. But a new theory is that the planets actually migrated away from and towards the sun, and that the first planet that came into being from this theory, uh, other than the sun, from this particular kind of theory, um, was Jupiter. So it was Jupiter that came into being first. And by Jupiter's creation, its migration towards and away from the sun, all the other planets were allowed to be born. So it's in a sense as though Jupiter helped to father the bodies of the other planets. And this is just from uh, a scientific theory based on this documentary I watched, but it's really fascinating. But back to the point. So we look at Jupiter for our capacity to pass on our legacy, our innate creativity, um, our capacity to connect with someone uh, sexually and so on. Um, that's all going to be the D7 and Jupiter. And from there, what happens? Well, once we've been embodied, the sun, our, our soul force coming into the world, once we've figured out who we are in relationship to our responsibilities, the moon, once we've started to, to take those resources that we've been able to manage well and go on our little adventure, creating our sense of self, um, sharing the divine will through our little human bodies in this world, Mars, Mercury, we build uh, greater wealth, greater fortune, and greater foundation. And the fourth Varga and the fourth sign, and even the fourth house, all have a very specific confluence to um, our stability within life and our capacity to build something greater, which is next up, which takes us to the D7 and Jupiter. And from there, once we have met our creative partners, uh, we've learned how to define our legacy and our creativity. Well, what happens then? Well, then we move on to the Navamsha. The Navamsha is our sense of purpose. For most people, that's going to be uh, children. However, a sense of purpose can come in many different forms. You can most certainly have your purpose directed towards career. You can have your sense of purpose directed towards your hobbies. You can have your sense of purpose directed towards an art. Um, towards charity, towards your spirituality. All that's going to be discerned through the Navamsha. And all of that's going to be discerned through your capacity for devotion to something greater. So here is your personal journey. Your personal journey goes from the one to the two, the two to the three, the three to the four, and then from the four to the other partner, the individual becoming united with a partner to the seven. And from there, we can build something greater, which is what? That's why the ninth is often related to family. Um, but the ninth is specific to our sense of purpose and our sense of destiny. And what's the planet that is very important to consider this? Follow the order, Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus. So we have Venus. Very important planet for the Navamsha. Why? Because Venus is the planet of devotion. What are we devoted to? We check Venus. Are we able to be devoted to our path, to feel a sense of fulfillment through our devotion? We check Venus in the uh, Navamsha. Are we able to feel devoted to our marriage partner, our long-term committed relationships? We check Venus in the Navamsha. Now, we also want to check Venus in all these other charts, too. Are we going to be devoted to our capacity to procreate or to pass on our legacy? Are we going to be devoted to properly managing our wealth and really appreciate that? Are we going to be devoted to exploring how to express this divine will uh, through our unique body and mind into the world? Are we going to be devoted to um, meeting our responsibilities well and respecting others' responsibilities? Are we going to be devoted to the Varga, number one, uh, where we are honoring and accepting our unique individuality, our life path, again, the sun. So you see, Venus is specifically important to the ninth, but it does have importance in all these other Vargas as well. So with Venus, look for it in the Navamsha to see what are the obstacles a person might have to their capacity to devotion. Uh, do they have difficult Saturn influencing the Navamsha and Venus? 
Well, maybe they're not able to bear the burdens required to be devoted to another individual. You know, it's easy to say that a yogi is just wrapped up in bliss all the time of God communion, but that yogi is devoted to doing the trials of sitting in meditation for hours or fasting or doing their mantras when it's no God communion whatsoever, at least they can perceive, until they have that final um, experience of revelation that Venus can give through their devotion. When it comes to marriage, a lot of people write to me and they want to have their marriage compatibility checked out. And you look at their Venus and you talk to them about their past relationships and they say, well, when is this one going to work out? And you realize that Venus is in such, such a situation that they don't really um, know how to devote themselves to something bigger than their own personal needs and their own personal desires. They don't know how to put things aside. They don't know how to bear the burdens, taking, for example, Saturn, or Mars having some difficulty in the Navamsha, impacting that Venus. They don't know the right things to fight for, so they cause more problems. Or Mercury having some difficulty in the Navamsha, uh, impacting Venus. They're not necessarily able to communicate well what they need to share in order to have a supportive, fulfilling relationship with a partner. So Venus is very important. It all comes down to devotion, which is why devotional practices of any sort can help your Navamsha, which is why a spiritual practice that enables you to see the beauty, the love, the fulfillment that this world has to offer um, helps to strengthen your Navamsha. This is why charity can help the Navamsha. This is why essentially just putting aside your own Petty desires can help out the Navamsha. It's all about developing devotion, and that's why Venus is key in the Navamsha. Now, to move on, once we have that sense of devotion, once we are on our path and we have the sense of purpose, we come to the D10, which is the planet that deals with our karmic fruits, our great fruits, the things that we either become known for, could be that, or it's really the things that we get fully engaged in how effective are our uh, attempts at activity in the world. That's all going to be based on the D10, the Desumptia, which is ruled over by what planet? Or not ruled over, I should say. Um, what is the most important planet in the D10 for this purpose? Well, if we go from Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus to 10, that brings us to Saturn. Uh, the sun is also very important in the D10, just like other planets are important in other Vargas too. But Saturn, Saturn is called the planet of greatness. How many of you think of Saturn as the planet of greatness? What makes a person great? What makes a person great is getting out of bed every morning and doing the exact same thing over and over, usually, <laughs> until they have mastered something. It's going through the dry spells, going through the spells of elation. It's being defeated and getting back up and carrying on. It's getting your feet chopped off, but saying, I'm still going to endure. Saturn is the planet of greatness, which is why Saturn is so important for the D10. The better Saturn is in the D10, the better the 10th bhava is in the D10, and even the first bhava. The first bhava in each of these uh, vargas are, are important as well. But for the D10, it's the first and the 10th, primarily. That's going to show you um, what kind of karmic impact we typically have in the world, which is why it's often related to great fruits and being more well-known, because the more successful you are, sometimes the more recognized you get. That's not always true. All right, we have to remember that that's not always true. But that's why the 10th is about great fruits. How successful can you be in impacting the world through your purpose, with your legacy, um, with your wealth, meeting your responsibilities and staying on your path in life? All this kind of comes together into the D10. And we'll go one step further, the D12. Well, what is the D12? The D12 is your ancestors, your ancestry, the influences of your ancestors. And so once we get to Saturn, in our typical order of planets, what often comes next? Well, it's Rahu and Ketu, or the nodes. So the nodes of the moon are most important for the D12. Now again, we look at everything, um, but the nodes of the moon are most important because even after you go through all of these things, well, you have to take into consideration your ancestral karma. 
you have to take into consideration the genetics that have been passed on to you. And we know that experiences, memories, um, health and disease tendencies, they're all passed on from your parents, from your genes. So that's often related to the D12, the Dwarda Samsha, and the nodes of the moon. So in general, these are some things to look at when you are considering uh, the Vargas and when you're considering the most important planet in each Varga. And again, this is a bit of a, a complex topic, and it does require that you have learned what each planet represents, what each house represents, uh, that you have learned your techniques well. Because if you haven't, you're just going to be shooting in the dark. You're just going to be using your intuition, and you're going to be doing astrology like a tarot reader. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there are really good astrologers who do it that way. But in order to kind of get down to the approach where you are laying out all the possibilities, and you're able to look at a chart and tease out what does the information say? Because some days your intuition doesn't work, right? <laughs> I'm sure you've experienced that. And so for those days, it's really good to really have your techniques down. But anyway, consider this. Think about these in relationship to the planets in each Varga. I will be doing a weekend webinar, um, I believe going up through Vargas 1 through 10. I don't know if I want to get to the, the Dwight Assumption. That'll be um, this October. In fact, it's actually going to be in about two weeks from now. Um, so if you're interested in that, contact us at astralvedicastrology.com. I believe the email to use is classes at astralvedicastrology.com. That'll get you signed up for that. Um, and this particular series ideally is going to be part one of two webinars. So we're going to do one here in October, and then ideally I'm going to try to do another one in January. That way you've got time to digest what we've shared, and then we can take it more deeply into looking at the Vargas specifically timing-wise through dashes, and even into um, transits to the Vargas. Now that's fascinating. I've really found that to work extremely well. So if you've ever had difficulty with dashes, you know, you're not quite sure exactly how to get them to work out as easily as you think, as people make them out to work out, they're actually very hard. So if you haven't had um, easy success with dashes, it may be that you're just seeing that it's a hard thing to do. <laughs> uh, but aside from that, if you've noticed that one of the most insightful methods I have found uh, astrologically for timing to get a sense of what's going on in a person's life is to look at the transits through the Vargas. But in order to be able to do that, you have to understand the Vargas first and foremost. So um, we'll spend some more time looking at those things as time moves on. So thank you very much for listening in. It's always a fascinating thing to talk about the planets and the Vargas and how all these numbers and signs and houses and whatnot all tie together. It can be a really profound spiritual uh, path just the study of astrology. So even if you're not interested in astrology to make it um, a part of your livelihood, just thinking about astrology, understanding astrology, contemplating astrology can give you pretty deep insights into life itself, which is, in my mind, uh, one of the best uses of astrology. Okay, so be well. Peace.